Well, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for tuning in. Now, you know what? As much as I feel like I have just gotten through Christmas, um, it's going to be Valentine's very soon. I, you know, like this is the second, we're just coming into the second week of January. It means that it's maybe a month away. So if I'm going to get some Valentine's stuff into the shop, I need to get moving. I need to get doing it now. So I'm gonna take you along with me um, for a couple of crafts. I'm not a huge, I don't know, like some people are huge Valentine's fans. Um, others aren't. I, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I, it's just never been a huge holiday thing for me or I haven't been a huge lover of it. And maybe it stems from public school. You know, back then, I know that public schools today, that if, if, you're, if your kids are giving Valentine's cards, then they have to give one to everybody in the class. But back in my day, <laughs> you just gave them to whoever you wanted. And there would be some people with, with big bags full of all these Valentines, and then some of us that didn't have big bags full of Valentines. And maybe it stemmed from then, but I don't know. For me, it's just an excuse to get some chocolate, which is never a bad thing. <laughs> It's just not a huge deal. Um, be that as it may, it doesn't mean I'm adverse to doing Valentine's crafts. So what I have done is I have drawn out, right? So I just took a piece of paper, folded it in half and drew half a heart and then here's my heart. And I did this two different patterns. I wanted a little shorter, fatter guy and a little taller, skinnier guy um, because, you know, people like different shaped hearts. And all I did was I traced them onto my boards. So I've got two boards, I've got two patterns drawn out onto this, and I am going to go and get them cut out. They are not gonna be perfect. My cutting is not perfect. These are curves, there's points. It's gonna be a challenge. I don't care. <laughs> Nobody's heart is perfect, and, and mine are gonna be a testament to that. So. I'll be right back as soon as I've got these cut and I will as well lightly sand the edges because there's always little flecks of wood that pops up there. So, so I'll be back. I have gotten my shapes cut out and I sanded them down. And quite honestly, um, they look way better after sanding. <laughs> the sanding um, kind of eliminated some, some areas where I hadn't been particularly skilled at the saw. But got them sanded down and I drilled a hole up into the bottom because I'm gonna want them to be on skewers. Okay, so I got those done. This one um, was a little bit more challenging. I don't think that it's a problem with it not being a perfect point. If I decide otherwise, I can fix that with a little bit of air dried clay. But before I get started on doing anything else, I wanna get them painted. And I'm just going to do a very soft, basic finish and for that, I'm gonna be using beadboard by DIY. So I'm gonna get both painted out. They're gonna have slightly different looks, but I want them to coordinate with one another. So I'm gonna get them painted, probably two coats on each of them, all surfaces, and I'm gonna paint the little rod. And then we'll be back. Okay, these have dried, um, and they're not perfect got some discoloration but it's okay because we're doing a bunch of other stuff to them so it's not a big deal um first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little decoupaging and here I'm gonna kind of do um similar looks but slightly different so they kind of coordinate just so they look good together on my shelf so I have this little floral napkin that I think is kind of pretty and a little valentines -y without being too much in there. And we are just separating out the ply. 
Um, and I like having irregular edges. So I'm just going to kind of tear this off a little bit here and there-ish. Just so that... Uh, we have no straight lines. And what I'm looking to do is just kind of roughly have it going up the side. Now that just ends up looking a little too perfect for me. If there's ever any such thing. All right, so that one kind of roughly like that. This one maybe roughly like this. That looks pretty good. Okay, cool beans. All right, so I have some ever trusty Mod Podge and I am going to brush it over the surface here and I'm brushing um, this on wider than I need because it's not going to hurt it in any way and I'm going to that wasn't even my design here we go I kind of had it coming like this perfect Take a little bit of a squeegee to kind of lay this out onto my glue. So just kind of flatten it out. And I'm just going to set that aside while I do this one. And this was coming down the opposite side. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to get these glued on. I'm going to leave them to dry a little bit before I then do my Mod Podge over the top. Um, I don't need them to dry fully, but I just like them to dry a little bit. I find then that when I go to do the next Mod Podge um, layer on it, that I don't end up with, with as many tears because it's already started to set up. These are mostly dry, kind of dryish to the touch. So it at least allows me to continue working. The next step, what I want to do is I want to add some molds. Um, and uh, I want to add clay. So it could be molds. It could be um, pressed shapes. So I'm thinking I've got all kinds of different stamps and things out here so and I've got different molds and oh my goodness so what I want to do is maybe add a little bit of texture of something here maybe butterflies okay so especially on this guy I think um in which case, I need to roll out some clay, so I'm just going to put some plastic wrap down to make it easier um, to be able to get it up. I don't know about you guys, but these boxes fall apart like so fast. <laughs> All right, let me get a little bit of clay. Had it here, where did I put it? Over here. So I'm using the IOD air dry clay and you can see I have a little, it's dry now, but I keep that old paper towel in there and then whenever my clay starts to feel um, a little bit hard, I just dampen that, put it in with my clay and it's all perfect again. All right, so I'm going to try and squish this. I don't have a good hand. I only have the one hand. Okay, 
let me squish this down. One hand, one finger. <laughs> what I want is to get this fairly flat. So, and, and not so much flat as fairly thin. And I want the edges, so you see how these edges are all kind of rough? Um, I want that. Okay, so these little things sticking up, we're catching on the plastic. How many rolls did it take me to figure out, point them upward, not down? You just have some days, some days where you're just kind of going, a smarter person would have figured that out ages ago. Okay. So I've got this fairly flat, and what I'm looking at doing for this is impressing into it. And I was looking at the Alpha Bellies stamp, and it's got some really cute little embellishments that look sort of, you know, like romantic-y, and they've got kinds of little florals and so I am putting them stamp side down meaning um, all of all of that texture is facing down into my clay and I'm just wondering about now switching over to the butterflies and if I could get most of the part of a butterfly there. Okay, so I have them laid out over my clay and I'm just going to Kind of gently roll them down into my clay. Awesome. Ooh, I like it when it works. And I want to peel them out. I'll clean them later. <laughs> okay, so you can see that I've got all of those patterns in there. So that as I go to lay this over the top, peel my plastic back. Okay, cool. All right, so that's where I'm going with this. Let me get some glue down and then we will, we'll get some glue down and we'll get this all. Glued down. So this way I said, I've got a bunch of drying that has to take place anyway. All right. Get this lead down. And this is where I really wanted that, that rough kind of, I'm just sliding it around because I didn't get the glue going all the way over and I'm just getting it covered. Okay, awesome. So that's perfect. What I am gonna do is take my X-Acto knife now and just go around the edge and cut away that excess. You don't wanna wait till it's dry to do that. There's kind of the start of our heart. What I need to do before we can start getting into distressing or anything is I need to let this dry. What I'm 
just doing now is just making sure those edges are kind of squished down so that when it's drying, um, those edges against the board will be great. So I'm putting that one off to the side and letting it dry. Now, this guy. I thought for this one, maybe instead of pressing into the clay and having the clay all over, we could maybe do some kind of border trim, maybe? Yeah, okay. Let's do these little swirly cues things. And I'm just starting with that mushed up clay. It, I checked the back of it to make sure that I didn't have tons, tons of glue on the back so that it would still be okay. And I'm not sure how far this reaches, so let me, um, mm. hopefully it releases. I didn't do any cornstarch in it, but it's not too, too thin. So I'm just kind of teasing it out. There we go, yay. So what I'm looking at doing is kind of having this curve around my border. Oh, that looks lovely, okay. <sighs> but now I need you. We do we need it to curve? This way. This one. Sometimes it's just a little bit of logicking. Okay, I think that works. So I'm going to glue those down and then let that dry. And then that's, that's it, that's enough of those. That's enough of the molds. Um, the rest is gonna come down to our painting and our finishing and we're gonna do that tomorrow once they're dry. Before I leave for the night and let this um, fully cure, I just want to take advantage of some drying time here. And I'm going to take a little bit of a sanding block and I'm going to use it to cut away that paper from the edge. So just kind of cleaning up those edges. And getting that excess paper out of the way. Then what I want to do, it's looking cute already, look at that. I just want to clean up these edges here where I've got some of that yellow glue and a little bit more around the edge. So I'm just going to take my white paint again. So we're doing beadboard by DIY. And I am just going to touch up all of those edges. I mean, obviously I'm not painting over my paper, but I just want to get a nice base coat of white over top of this. My clay has dried enough that um, it's still cold to touch, which means it's still wet, right? But I'm not going to be hurting it any to kind of paint over it right now. I'm not going to be mushing the design at all, but I just want to clean up all of these edges so that tomorrow I can move forward with some more of my project. It's the next day. These have all dried. 
So two slightly different looks, but they still go together. They still coordinate. So it's time to finish them off. Now, this one, this one, all of the white space is all patterned. So that's going to come out in our finish. Here we've got a little bit of white space. Now you could leave it. I just have a really, really tiny stamp pad with lettering. It's really tiny. Um, and I'm just thinking it would maybe look cute to just put a little tiny bit of that in there. Why not? If I don't like it, I can soften it out. So, um, I don't even know where I got this. I, I got it in a, in a lot of um, stamp stuff that somebody's getting rid of off of Marketplace. So I'm just using IOD ink. This is black, but again, I figure I can soften it out if I need to. And I'm just kind of squishing it <laughs> in between my molds. Okay, and let's just put a little tiny bit up here. See if I had enough juice on it. All right, so there we go. All that's gonna get softened out anyway. Let's move this off to the side for cleaning later. Okay, so what I want to do is I need to get, I'm looking for kind of a stiff brush to do. I wanna get clear wax over everything. So, What did you have on you? You had gold on you. Okay, that's not a clean brush. <laughs> All right, that's just lovely. Okay, we'll make that work. The stuff that happens. Okay, so I'm gonna get clear wax over top of all of this. And you can see I'm going over top of that stamp, that ink already, it's already on there permanent it's fine I'm not smearing it or anything with this that's how quickly that sets up all right now that I've got my clear wax on I can start to embellish and one of the things that I have is I have making uh, a making powder from DIY this one is in the color patchouli which is sort of like a pinky tone so I have a small little brush and rather than taking gray or an aging, I just thought, you know what? This is Valentine's. We can be a little bit more fun, a little bit more whimsical. We want to get, you know, if I was using like a, a, like a dark and decrepit dust or an old and gray dust or, you know, something, I'd be working it down into all of the little details that we've stamped down into this, that we've impressed down in. So what I'm doing instead is kind of highlighting those details with this powder. And because I've got the clear wax on there, it's now, um, I'm working it down into that wax, so it's now adhering to my design. And then I'm just wiping some of the highs away. So you can see where I've done it. Um, and where I haven't, is just kind of a, a light look. You could, you can really, you could make it as dark as you want. You could add in like a darker color. This darker purple is uh, violaceous. Um, I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> Looks how it's spelled. I'm going with that. But it's just, you know what? It's just a nice little change from just doing um, an antiqued look. I mean, these powders you can use uh, with on your piece as well. You could uh, add them in, blend them to some of your wet paint on, on a piece of painted furniture or on any of your designs. They've got a lot of versatility. Here, we're just doing it with the wax. But it just gives... slightly different look than if we were just doing it in the gray. So it just kind of highlights that out. Um, the other one, 
I am just going to do in kind of the antique finish. We've got the stamp, we've got some things going, and I'm just doing kind of, again, I don't want it super dark looking. Mm -mm, here we go, I knew I had another little paintbrush. And this one is just like um, a light gray powder. So we're just gonna add that in to just kind of highlight some of the details. And just because this is Valentine's, you know that I'm gonna come back in with some gold in a second. Kind of the, I'm, I'm gonna say the finishing touch on these before we sort of assemble it all together is taking a little bit of the DIY golden roll. Now this um, is a gold wax that you can apply and it's very, translucent looking. You can get heavier look by adding on additional coats, but I'm really looking for a slightly soft look, not really harsh. So you can see down on the bottom, how it just adds a little bit more of something. It kind of highlights some of the details. It brings out a little bit. It kind of softens the look a little bit. Gives it a little bit more of that kind of slightly romantic look to it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a little bit to the outside edge as well and I'm gonna do that to both of them and then I'll come back and we'll do some of the assembly together all right to finish my hearts off what I have is a couple little um, China glasses little mugs um, that I have put a little bit of floral foam into I have taken my painted and I did wax these sticks as well and I've cut them down to a size that appeals to me. You can see I did a little bit of gold wax on the back of these and all I'm going to do is, I've hot glued them in place by the way, and I'm going to stick them down into the middle of my mugs. which is more than enough to hold them into place. So you can see I've got two varying heights so that if I have them together, they're gonna look good. And I'm just going to glue some moss onto, moss always makes such a mess, doesn't it? I'm gonna take some moss and I'm going to glue it around the base just so that all of that is covered. And um, I'm looking at this moss and just debating, I might go and get some Spanish moss instead of this. This might be a little too green for my liking, but I'm gonna glue some moss <laughs> to finish them off. And uh, I'll take some pics so that you can see, you know, you know what hot gluing moss looks like. Um, so you can take, see some, some pics of them in their finished state. But super easy, super quick. You can do something similar with this. Um, instead of having to cut out the rounds, the dollar store has wooden rounds, in which case just take your stick whether it's a little dowel like this, which was from the dollar store, or a stick from your backyard painted white, you can hot glue it onto the back of those and even stick them into an arrangement in one, one pot um, of whatever kind. Instead of little mugs, which I haven't harmed, these can still be used for other things. I can pull that, that uh, floral foam out, but you could use little terracotta pots that are painted out, that are decoupaged or stenciled or a little mold added to those as well. And you can create a whole little vignette of all these different hearts. I think as well, um, super fun to do with kids. You can get them doing the painting and the decoupaging, the molding, and they could have a lot of fun and uh, create a whole, 
a whole bouquet of little little hearts. Um, mine are thicker, so you could certainly um, hot glue on some ribbon or some rope, um, some beads on the outside if you want to get really fancy and zhuzh them up even more. I'm, I'm not a, a big, super fancy kind of gal, but you know, little pearls on the outside would look cute. You do you. Decorate them how you will. But I think that a little grouping of these, a little vignette, would be super sweet for Valentine's Day. Let me know what you think of this one, guys. Always love to hear from you, and I definitely look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care.